Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you all for coming here this afternoon. <clears throat> I am joined by assistant district attorneys from my Economic Crimes Bureau, Bureau Chief Mike Beezer, Assistant District Attorney Karina Pinch, and Assistant District Attorney Jacob Arp. We are here this afternoon to update the community on the conclusion of an investigation that has had much speculation over the years. We are here today to be transparent and upfront with the people of Monroe County. We are not here to conduct a trial in the media, and we are not here to comment on evidence. We are here to announce that earlier today, a Monroe County grand jury handed up an indictment against Lovely A. Warren, Albert Jones Jr., and Rosalind Brooks Harris. The indictment charges them with scheme to defraud in the first degree in violation of penal law section 190.65, subdivision 1B, which alleges that the defendants on or about and between November 6, 2013 and November 7, 2017 engaged in a scheme constituting a systematic ongoing course of conduct with intent to defraud more than one person or to obtain property from more than one person by false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, or promises, and so obtained property with a value in excess of $1,000 from one or more persons. That's the first count of the indictment. The second count alleges a violation of election law, section 14-126, subdivision 6, which alleges that the defendants during that same time period, while acting on behalf of a candidate or a political committee, knowingly and willfully solicited, organized, <clears throat> or coordinated the formation of activities of one or more unauthorized committees, made expenditures in connection with the nomination for election or election of any candidate, or solicited any person to make such expenditures for the purpose of evading the contribution limits set by law. Both of these charges are Class E felonies. I would like to go through the timeline that led us all here today for the announcement of this indictment. But first, I have to recognize those who were instrumental in this exhaustive investigation. First, I must thank Risa Sugarman, the Chief Enforcement Counsel with the Division of Election Law Enforcement for the State Board of Elections. Risa and her division conducted an impressive and in-depth investigation that assisted in securing these indictments. I also want to thank my team here at the Monroe County District Attorney's Office and the ADAs that you see here today. They have spent copious amounts of time to ensure that this investigation was conducted thoroughly and appropriately and with integrity. And now I want to go through the timeline that resulted in today's allegations. Between April and November of 2017, the State Board of Elections Division of Election Enforcement received multiple formal complaints from James Shepard, former Rochester Police Chief, and Rochester for All concerning campaign finance activities for the Friends of Lovely Warren and Warren for a Stronger Rochester PAC. The State Board of Elections then began to conduct a preliminary review of these allegations. My office first became aware of this and became involved in March of 2018 when we initially met with the Board of Elections to review the complaint and their preliminary review. I personally met with Risa Sugarman on August 14th of 2018 which, which then it was determined that the Monroe County District Attorney's Office would take jurisdiction of this investigation along with the assistance of the State Board of Elections. After months of compiling documents and reviewing information, in August of 2019, our files were provided to the New York State Division of Election Enforcement investigators and attorneys for their analysis and examination. On March 6, 
2020, the New York State Board of Elections Division presented their findings to my office, summarized in a 35-page report that found considerable evidence that Lovely A. Warren, Albert Jones Jr., and Rosalind Brooks Harris may have violated the penal law of the state of New York as well as the election law in connection with campaign finance activities. Our investigation began in earnest at this point, but was slowed due to the Corona-19 pandemic. As all of you know, court operations slowed down and grand juries were not impaneled during the height of the pandemic. A grand jury that began its term in September concluded today, which brings us here. As all of you know, this is an indictment, not a conviction. These are simply allegations of violations of the law. As with any case that moves forward through my office, we will move forward in the court of law. And I want to reemphasize, this case must be tried in the courtroom. It must not be tried in the media. Lovely Warren, Albert Jones Jr., and Rosalind Brooks Harris are scheduled to be arraigned on Monday, October 5th at 4 p.m. in front of Cayuga County Court Judge Thomas G. Leone. This, however, will occur here in Monroe County. And again, I want to thank the New York State Board of Elections and my staff for conducting the necessary investigation that brought us here today. Obviously, we're announcing an indictment. There are very few questions regarding the evidence that we can answer. You know, we will attempt to answer as many questions as possible. And at the conclusion, we will be providing all of you with a copy of the indictment. Sandra, so, <laughs> okay, Berkeley. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, how much money are we talking about? You know, um, I'm, I'm not prepared to give that number to the press at this point, um, but it, it could be substantial. <laughs> what, is, what is substantial? I, I'm going to invite other members of the, of the team to speak, but we don't want to give an exact number. Okay. But In terms of uh, exact numbers, we're not going to get into that at this time, but the political action committee, as well as the campaign itself, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is involving all of that campaign finance activity in those four years. Are you still investigating? At this, at this point, this indictment has been handed up and we're ready for trial. But are you investigating any other actions, activities, or things that would have happened in connection with this? I'm not going to comment on that, Berkeley. Thank you. Then you say the investigation is closed. The in investigation with regard to campaign finance between the periods 2013 and 2017 is closed and concluded as resulted in this indictment being handed up today. And everybody who could be charged is charged? Yes. Can you summarize again exactly what you think the mayor did wrong? What do you mean by this, Charlie? And, and again, we need to be careful as to you know, what we say, but I'll have, I'll have Mr. Ark do that. Thank you. Certainly. <laughs> uh, the long and short of it, obviously we can only get into so much detail regarding that as it is trial evidence. Um, it's largely the use of the political action committee in conjunction with an authorized campaign committee, uh, the source of, source of which is obviously in violation of the election law as well as the penal law, and quite frankly, in terms of the uh, first count, the entire political action committee itself, very well fraudulent. So it's really the common operational control of those two things. The, the mayor has, uh, in, in her comments on, on this subject over the years, she said that uh, she's characterized it as as an error, sort of sloppy bookkeeping, we're sorry, and we fixed it. Um, how would you respond to that, given the evidence that you, that you understand that you have? Sure, simply put, the indictment um, alleges otherwise, and that will be what we will be, you know, handling in, a, in, in the courtroom. I don't want to comment any further on how we would prove that, but again, I think the indictment, you know, alleges that this was not a mistake. The mayor has also previously said that she thought that this was a political witch hunt. How do you respond to that? You know, this is, this is not political. I am the chief law enforcement officer for Monroe County. I was presented with an investigation. I reviewed the facts. I presented this case to, well, my team presented it to a grand jury as we would any other case. And the result is the indictment that we're handing down today. It is not political. I am simply doing my job. Sandra, the uh, Rosalind Brooks Harris 
in the finance director for the city. She was the deputy finance director during the campaign. Was any campaign activity conducted at City Hall? I'm not going to comment on that, Berkeley. Are you looking into something like that? I, again, I, I can't comment at this point. It, it, it really doesn't. I mean, we proceeded um, as we would any other case that comes into our office. I mean, during the course of at least my career in the DA's office, we have investigated other high-profile individuals, including law enforcement um, officers, law police chiefs. You know, again, we were presented with an alleged violation of the laws of our state, and we looked at it and did our due diligence, worked with the State Board of Elections investigators, and the result here is this indictment that is being presented to the community this afternoon. Did you look beyond 2017? I'm not going to comment on that. Thank you. Well, the fact that she was a felony, does that affect any um, law that she can continue on? Uh, does she have to take a new action? I, I don't believe this affects her ability to serve as the mayor. I do know that if an individual is convicted of a felony and that person is an attorney, their law license would be in jeopardy. Does it affect their pension? I do not know that answer. And I'm assuming, uh, usually felonies are arrested. Would she be in an appearance ticket? You know, um, I, I'm, I'm not about a perp walk. I, uh, we've notified the, uh, the attorneys that um, are representing the individuals here. Before I came down here today, I reached out and I notified the attorneys of the outcome of the grand jury, and I ad advised them of the date of the um, the, the arraignment. Um, you know, Lovely Warren is still the mayor of the city of Rochester. Mayoral business needs to continue. I want to be as um, I don't want to disrupt that, and I want us to continue in our community. So I, I thought the better course was just to notify her of the arraignment. Why is Judge Pomano? I'm sorry. Why is Judge Pomano no longer? Because um, speaking with the administrative judge, we thought it would be better that there be a judge brought in who was not familiar with what is happening in Rochester and may not even be familiar with um, with the mayor. So it would create a better appearance. Sandra, I think sometimes the average person sees the buses running on time, the roads plowed, the buildings getting built, taxes collected, and so on and so forth. And so they have a hard time understanding why these kinds of allegations matter to them or how they affect uh, the public. Why, why are these kinds of allegations, why should, why should the average person care about this? Exactly. I, I, we, we all want our elections to be run fair. And these are laws on the books to allow and ensure that people who are entering political office follow the rules so that there is equal access to everyone. There are certain rules about coordinating campaign funds or seeking uh, monetary amounts over the contribution limits that are set by law. These are important. We all want fair campaigns. Does this come down to cheating? Is it just cheating? Well, you know, Berkeley, let's look at the first, the first count of the indictment. We, we assert by this indictment that this is allegedly a scheme to defraud. Sure. <laughs> uh, certainly. So, as I stated earlier, uh, for the first county indictment, the scheme to defraud in the first degree, uh, we are alleging that the entire political action committee itself was fraudulent. Uh, in terms of the second count, the election law, there's a violation of New York State election law uh, whereby a certain amount is set for each campaign. And in this case, it was $8,557. Uh, that amount, and it's per individual donor or organizational donor, to the campaign itself. Uh, the basis of that alleg this allegation is that that political action committee was used to circumvent that amount and create an unfair advantage. As District Attorney Drolley stated, we're here to ensure free and fair elections for everybody. Sure, yeah. what's, the, what's the timeline now? Uh, the arraignment is on the 5th, right? uh, Monday the 5th at 4 p.m. And what transpires after? You know, at, at that time, this will proceed like any other case that we handle. You know, we will be turning over discovery as is required by the new discovery laws, um, the grand jury minutes, 
and it will proceed in front of Judge Leon. Do you perceive this though being months away, a trial being, if it, if it goes to trial, months away, weeks away, years away? What do we know? You know, it, it, it's hard to determine. I know in Monroe County, we're just starting to begin jury trials, and they're scheduled at one jury trial a week. So this could be quite, you know, a long process. And I'm sure, you know, we anticipate that there'll be challenges along the way. So I don't think this is anything that's going to be resolved quickly, in my opinion. In terms of what kind of penalty would you face for a felony like that? Sure. I, I mean, it's a Class E felony, and it's nonviolent. So there could be a range of a variety of, of sentencing options. The maximum would be one and a third to four in state prison, but there could also be, you know, probation, split sentences, and, you know, restitution in this case. I'm sorry, these are, these are um, <laughs> non-bailable offenses, so, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, there was a question before about what, what the amount of money at stake, you had mentioned there could be several hundred thousand dollars, but after the first said there's a month at stake, several hundred thousand dollars where they would not get a specific amount, is that an accurate way to portray? Yes, that's fine, Patty. Mm -hmm. Restitution will be paid to the donor or to who? I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> Attorney Jacob Ark. And your title, I'm sorry? Uh, senior Assistant District Attorney. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ark, would you seek or would you need the cooperation of Mayor Warren and her associates in good faith? Would they cooperate? Let me answer it this way. Um, th this action was not commenced by the filing of a felony complaint, which is typically done in criminal actions. However, we notified the mayor and the other co-defendants of the grand jury proceeding. We gave them the opportunity to testify if they wished. Um, we did not go beyond that. Um, at this point, um, the mayor has counsel, so we could not speak to her directly. Should they testify? I, I'm not going to comment on that. How long did the grand jury proceeding take? Well, we started uh, about four weeks ago. so. I'm not going to tell you how many hours, Bill. <laughs> Can I just ask you how sure. challenging it was? I know you've, you've prosecuted people who have held high positions, and, but, but she is a colleague of yours. I mean, you're in different parties, but you've supported each other uh, in the community. I mean, was, was this challenging for you? You know, of course, whenever there's, you know, an allegation of, of public uh, violation of public trust, it it does, you know, it's, it's a horrible thing to see in any community. And of course, I was you know, very disappointed. But again, you know, in the position that I am in, I have to you know, set emotions aside, and I've got to look at the facts, and I've got to look at the law. And if a prosecution is warranted, then it's my obligation to go forward. And that's exactly what happened in this case. You commented on uh, the status of the mayor being able to continue her duties for the time up until arraignment. What about uh, Albert Jones and Rosalind Brooks Harris? And, and again, they're going to be arraigned. Um, I don't know if there'll be any conditions of release. Again, these are uh, Class E felonies that, under the new bail reform, um, they would be subject to an appearance ticket here. They're just being notified of their date in court. Um, I believe that Ms. Brooks Harris works at City Hall, but again, I, I have no bearing on her employment. It is, uh, this is typical for anyone facing a Class E felony. That's correct. That's correct. Of, these, of, of this nature, yes. On the cooperation of folks, did uh, both Ms. Brooks Harris and Ms. Jones, did they, have they been cooperative? As a matter of fact, they have. They, they spoke to investigators um, from the district attorney's office regarding these allegations before the case went into grand jury. She will have to be processed. We'll, we'll be making those arrangements. As a matter of fact, we were speaking with attorneys before we came down here today. Today that will happen? We're not sure when it's going to happen. Where, where would that happen? Um, I believe the sheriffs do it over in Central Booking.
Okay, and Callie does have copies of the indictment? Thank you.